shall we lift up our two hands to heaven this morning because every chain must be broken today every siege must be over today every hold of the wicked must be broken off your life today lift up your two hands to heaven and give God thanks because of the packet that awaits you today thank him also for the grace that is granted you to be a partaker of these 21 days of prayer and fasting lift up your two hands celebrate the faithfulness of God over your life because you are coming out of these 21 days of fasting dominating your world in all aspects no more harassment on your life Ask him to give you an encounter with his world today because one of the blessings of fasting is outbreak of revelations. Jesus, grant me an encounter with your word today. Every encounter with the word empowers. Every encounter with the word empowers. Give me an encounter with your word today. God's power resides in his word. Give me an encounter with your word today. Give me an encounter with your word today. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Lord Jesus, let today be a day of empowerment indeed for your people. Amen. Empower us into next levels of dominion. Amen. Empower us to operate in a different world. Let each one return from this service today empowered and re-empowered for dominion. Amen. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. My case is different. Congratulations. Congratulations, your neighbors to your right and to your left. And please be seated. Let's go one more time. My case is different. Yes. Congratulations one more time. Now we've been looking at gateways to operating in a different world. Gateways to operating in a different world. The one non-negotiable way to operate in a different world is to be empowered by the Spirit of God. Empowerment is the gateway to operating in a different world. After Jesus returned empowered, He began to operate in another world. Everyone around him knew that something has changed.
You can't be empowered without making a difference. But as we go on this morning, I'd like to know to note that we must beware of distraction. It is the greatest enemy on your journey to empowerment. Beware of distraction. When Elisha undertook that journey with Elijah, he suffered three levels of distractions that would have made him to back out. But he overcame the distractions and stepped into the shoes of Elijah. Distractions, distractions, distractions. Beware of distractions if you must be truly empowered. Beware of distractions. We talk about the temptation of Christ. All those who are there on the mountain of empowerment just to disconnect him from the core mission of that prayer and fasting. Beware of distraction. 1977, I went on a journey to empowerment. And as I arrived on that mountain, the sky turned black. When I got there, it was normal. But under 30 minutes to one hour, the sky turned black. What are you doing here? No, sorry. The first time we arrived, a snake fell down from a tree. I don't know how the snake got there. To scare me from being there. I said, this must be the garden of the Lord because there was a serpent that came in there. <laughs> I'm staying. Then the sky turned blue and became dark. And Rain said, there is no hiding place here. You must be stupid coming here. I said, Rain, stop. Rain didn't stop. I, I, I too didn't stop. So we were there together. The rain fell and first day, first day means what are you doing here? The sun came the second day and dried the clothes because there's nowhere to stay. There was nowhere for bathroom. There was no covering, nothing. But I returned on the third day a different man. As I was concluding, or I concluded, and trying to roll down myself from the hill, the Lord said to me, Behold, I have touched your tongue with a coal of fire, life. And from henceforth, as you say it, you will see it. I had it by myself. It was spoken to me directly by the Lord. It was a change of level. Praise God. <laughs> Beware of distractions, stay focused. These three weeks, we are done with one remaining two weeks. I said, Jesus suffered destruction. Elijah suffered destruction. This, your prophet, suffered distractions of all kinds, but will not be overcome by distractions. And so has remained freshly empowered over the years. Not everybody on the street is a human being. Some are highly demonized. They are like Satan personified. Others are highly divinized. Their divinity content is very high.
There are two different worlds here. The kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. You belong to one. There are children of God in this world and there are also children of the devil. There are empowered believers and there are just religious believers who suffer everything the world suffers. That's why the subject of empowerment must be very critical to your life. Amen. Amen. Beware of distractions these two weeks ahead of you. Beware of distractions. Be the Elisha of this hour who must get what God has reserved for you. And you will get it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Beware of distractions. Why? When we return in power, we take territories from the enemy. The Bible says, Thou, through the greatness of thy power, shall thy enemies submit themselves unto you. Psalm 66 and verse 3. Even devils are subject to us in your name. And Jesus said, I gave to you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy, and nothing shall by enemies hurt you. That's why the devil generates distractions to block your access to empowerment. Because when you are empowered, you take the territories from him. Empowerment will always demand focus. I had this experience in 1986 at the Kenneth Hagin Convention. I sat in that meeting that afternoon. I could never remember who sat by my side, on my right, or my left. I couldn't even remember how the state looked like. My eyes were fixed on this anointed man, desperately desiring the transference of the grace upon his life on my life. And at a point, that was an encounter. I had something like an electric shock hit at me, and I broke down, crying uncontrollably. And the Lord said to me in the midst of the cry, my son David, the baton has been passed over to you. Life. You must return imparted. Amen. You must return in power. Amen. The effect of that is what you see today. The effect of that is what you see today. This is vital. This is crucial. That's why you must stay focused. These three weeks is ordained for your empowerment into next levels. So stay focused. When you return empowered, you dominate your circumstances. Stay focused. Stay focused. Last Sunday, we looked at the spirit of love. And today, we're looking at the spirit of power. The spirit of power. We try to classify the seven spirits of God into four. One, the spirit of the Lord, which is the spirit of power. And then we have the spirit of wisdom and revelation, which comprises the spirit of wisdom, understanding, counsel, and knowledge. Then we have the spirit of might, which actually connotes the spirit of faith. If you can believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And then, of course, the spirit of love, which we dealt with last Sunday, which is the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Let us recognize that the kingdom of God is not in words, but in power. 
Your relevance in the kingdom is a function of your empowerment. It is your level of empowerment that defines your relevance in the kingdom. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 20. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. It's in power. By the encounter of today, you are going to be empowered into next levels. We also try to establish the fact that empowerment is in levels. The ankle deep level, the knee deep level, the waist deep level, and the level of the river that cannot be passed over, the overflowing level, the level in which Jesus operated, who was given the spirit without measure. John 3.34, the spirit without measure. And we saw that spirit defined as the seven spirits of God that was upon him. you find that in Revelation chapter 3, verse 1, Revelation chapter 4, verse 5, Revelation chapter 5, verse 6. The seven spirits of God was upon Christ. And the Bible defines that as the spirit without measure. That's what we are trying to look at. Empowerment is vital to our relevance in the kingdom. Gateways to operate in a different world. Engaging the spirit of power. It's also important for us to know that um, empowerment follows our commitment for stewardship. We are empowered to serve. Acts 1 8, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost come upon you and you shall become witnesses. You shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria to the utmost part of the earth. So we are empowered primarily to serve the interest of the kingdom. So it is our commitment to serve that determines the level of empowerment we ever be entitled to. A commitment to serve the interests of the kingdom. Behold my servant, I have put my spirit within him. It's my servant. We saw Cyrus. He shall build my city. Amen. So, a heart for God is fundamental to our level of empowerment. A commitment to serving the interests of his kingdom is crucial to our level of empowerment. My friend of blessed memory, Miles Moro, will say, when purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. The purpose of empowerment is primarily to serve the interests of his kingdom. The spirit of the Lord upon me, for he has anointed me to bind the brokenhearted. Has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. To preach deliverance to the captives. And recovering of sight to the blind. To set at liberty. them. You know, the purpose is well defined. You are empowered to serve the interests of his kingdom on the earth. I have found David, my servant, with my holy oil, have I anointed him so he can keep serving me and my, the interest of my kingdom in his life. And when David was anointed in chapter 16, in chapter 17, he brought down Goliath. 
and rescued God's people from harassment and shame. That's the purpose. So we cannot be anointed beyond our heart for God. We cannot be anointed beyond our heart for God and the interest of his kingdom. The greater our heart for God, the greater our access to next levels of empowerment. Jesus returned from the mountain of prayer and fasting, empowered to live in a different world. And his fame was all across the country. And his fame went across the whole region. Round about. In verse 37, went around the whole country. It became an amazement. In the temple, all the eyes were fixed on him. He became a man from another planet. You are returning from these 21 days of prayer and fasting, a man and a woman from another planet. Yeah. And we saw people exclaim wherever he went, what manner of man is this? Matthew 8, 27. What manner of man is this? That even the winds and the sea obey him. After he returned empowered, he became a man from another planet. We heard people say, we have never seen it on this fashion. It's a new day. We've never seen it on this fashion. Mark 2 and verse 12. In Luke 5, 26, the people exclaim, we have seen strange things today. Your life will be springing surprises as an aftermath of this prayer and fasting. <laughs> we have seen strange things today. We have seen strange things today. Whence has this man this wisdom? Save me from another planet. When has this man this wisdom and these mighty works? Matthew 13 and verse 54. You are returning from this fasting and prayer episode an exclamation mark. <laughs> Wherever you are found, there shall be exclamation on what manner of man is this? What manner of woman is this? Things will be happening on a different frequency in your life from henceforth. Also, we saw Christ return with the following. A quickened body immune to sickness and disease. So you will say to me, Fisher, and here they say, look at me. A quickened body, empowered to dominate the world of sickness and disease. It never sneezed one. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profits nothing. The word I've spoken to you, they are spirit and they are life. He returned with the quickening spirit in his body. 
Remember the Bible said, then shall your head spring forth speedily. Isaiah 58 and verse 8. Fasting and prayer empowers our head to spring forth speedily. Because it's a quickening force. The Spirit of God is a quickening force. The Spirit of God is a quickening force. As the Lord liveth, the last sickness you saw is the last we ever see in your life. Because the empowerment of the Spirit quickens our mortal body. Quickens our mortal body. The more anointed a man, the more quickened his body. To be quickened means to be made alive. The more alive his body. Because the Spirit of God is a quickening spirit. A return with a quickened body. A made alive body. Even this morning, whatever represents any form of sickness or disease in your body must give way. Because fasting, prayer and fasting is a platform for empowerment of the spirit which quickens our mortal body. There are many people in this church that don't know the meaning of sickness or disease again. And many have been living like that for many years. You will be joined to that list today. Yeah. He also returned with a quickened soul. Mm. In Isaiah 11 and verse 1 and 2, we saw the seven spirits of God. In verse 3, we saw that it shall make him of quick understanding. Quick understanding. In the fear of the Lord, quick understanding. In the things of God and the things of life, quick understanding. Quick understanding. The Spirit of God quickens our mind. And so they exclaim, What manner of man is this? They exclaim, Whence has this man this wisdom? And these mighty works, because the seven spirits of God empowered him with a quickened mind. That spirit was in Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They call it the spirit of excellence. They were ten times better than their colleagues. Ten times, Daniel chapter 1, verse 21. They were, well, verse 17, they were ten times better. Go to verse 20. Ten times better than their colleagues. And in um, Daniel 6 and verse 3, they said, because an excellent spirit was in Daniel. The spirit of God is the spirit of excellence. That spirit quickens our mind. Thereby quickening our level of understanding. This morning, expect to return with a quickened mind. <laughs> and by that quickened mind, you'll be sent for from strange quarters. Because you just got, you just have the answer. You just have the answer. You just have the answer. There's a man in that kingdom. Daniel chapter 5 verse 11. In the days in whom is the spirit of the holy God. Or call him the spirit of God. In the days of thy father, light and understanding and wisdom. Like the wisdom of the gods was found in this man. Amen. Whom thy father made the head of all astrologers 
soothsayers, chargers, magicians. Because by the wisdom of God, he was above all of them. Let Daniel be sent and he will show you this mystery. Be sent for. I mean, quickened mind. The spirit of excellence empowered Daniel to dominate in the, in the land of his captivity. This is important. A quickened soul. And then, of course, he returned with a quickened spirit. Which of you convinces me of sin? He operated in the realm of perfected holiness in the fear of the Lord. He who knew no sin was made sin for us. The spirit of God is the spirit of holiness. Romans 1.4 So every deadly habit you detest must lose grip of you this time. He returned with dominion over all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. I mentioned that earlier. He was casting out evil spirits with his word. He was taking sickness and disease from people. Matthew 8, 16 and 17. He gave his disciples power against unclean spirits and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. You can't give what you don't have. So he had dominion over all manner of sickness, Matthew 10, 1, and over all manner of disease. You are returning with dominion over all manner of sickness and all manner of disease from this prayer and fasting platform. Yeah. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Yeah. And finally, a return with dominion over all devils. Luke 4, 32 to 34. After I return the power of the Spirit, the people were astonished for his word was power, with power. Now, let's go down in verse 33. And in the synagogue, there was a man which had an unclean devil and cried out with a loud voice, saying what? Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. Amen. Had thou come to destroy, he returned with dominion over all devils. There are those who have to resist the devil. Get off my side. There are those who cast them out. Get out of here. There are those who are empowered to destroy devils. It's all in degrees. You are returning from this prayer and fasting, destroying every devil on your path. Yeah. Destroying every devil on your path. Yeah. I've stated this or made this known several times. 1979, I was out in a place and I was moved by the Spirit of God 
to made an altar call for witches so they can be set free. And I said, how many of you are witches here? And they stood up. I said, maybe you don't understand what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about somebody call you a witch. I'm talking about you know you're a practicing witch. Sit down first. If you're a practicing witch, get up here. And they stood up. And I said, okay, what do you do? I call one of them. What do you do with the devil? He said, anytime we want to suck blood, we get on the highway. We cause anybody to come into some assault, and then we suck the blood of the victims. I said, what are when people like us are coming? He said, when we sense a higher power, what do we do? We clear up. There are powers that we grind you on that road. That is where you are going. Yeah. I said, that's where you are going. Yeah. That was July 1979. That's where you are going. He said, when we sense, you think demons don't have sense? I mean, that demon said, we, I, I know you who thou art. They are not daft. They know where to stand and they know where to clear off. I know thee who thou art. You come to destroy us. I know thee who thou art. The Holy One of God. He said, another place, have you come to torment us? There are devil tormentors. There are devil destroyers. There are devil casters. And there are devils resistors. Resist. They just resist. Leave me alone now. What is the matter? Leave me alone now. Praise God. They are resistant. They are on defense. They are tormentors. Come on, get out. Come and say, my level is changing. That's why the devil will do anything to distract your attention. Because your change of level is the downfall of his kingdom. Your change of level is the downfall of his kingdom. Come and say, I'm changing level. Say, Lord, I'm changing level. I'm changing level today. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. That is what is in empowerment. And then lastly, we are empowered for exploits. Jesus returned empowered for exploits. If you read Isaiah 45, God said to the Lord, to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose hand have I holding to subdue nations before him, and I will lose the loins of kings. To open before him the two live gates, and the gates shall not be shut. I will go before him and make the cruel part straight. And I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. Now I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which called thee by thy name, am God of Israel. And then he went on and on and on and on. And in verse 13, he said, He, I have raised him up in righteousness, and I will direct all his way. He shall build my city and let go my captives, not for price nor reward, said the Lord of hosts. That again shows the purpose of it. There are city builders here today. You may be in a two small two room apartment right now, but as the anointing comes on you, you are turned into a city builder. You are turned into a city builder. 
a number of ministries in Nigeria today are city building ministries. Amen. Sit. I mean, the devil can't fathom it. We used to be called mushroom churches because the best of the buildings you have will be batchers. Batchers. You have plenty of money, then you have, you know, metal pipes. Otherwise, it's just wood. And then suddenly you find cities emerging. Many ministries today in this country are city building ministries. What got them there? The anointing. Come and say the anointing. The anointing. There is no way you won't need vehicle from coming from the new estate that is under construction. You, you can't check down here. Yet it's on the same premises. If you must start to get down here for 6 o'clock service, you must leave at 4.30. Now, from the same environment. So that's enough to make the devil hungry. Yes. Now, but let me tell you this. Individual members of the body of Christ in Nigeria will soon be turned into city builders. Yes. Jesus returned empowered for exploit. As you return from this mountain, you'll be empowered for exploit. <laughs> Things that nobody could imagine about you will become the order of the day. <laughs> but remember, it takes a panting of the soul and a longing of the flesh to be endued with the spirit of power. It takes a task. It's not what you walk into casually. It's what you are desperate for. And if you know these things that are loaded into it, then getting in there or panting for it becomes natural. It becomes natural. I'm going to return empowered for exploits. I shall return with dominion over all devils. I shall return with dominion over every manner of sickness and disease. Man, you can't you can't be aware of all of these benefits and not despise the task, the demand to enter into that area. You are entering there in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Now, what is in the anointing oil? So it means the breakthrough power. The spirit of the Lord is the spirit of breakthroughs. David was anointed with oil in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 13. He brought down Goliath, 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 40 to 54. You know the story. And David was anointed with oil in the midst of his brethren. And the spirit of the Lord came upon him from that day forward. And that is the spirit of breakthrough. And this little teenager rescued a whole nation from shame and reproach. And David became a national hero at the age of 17. Something is changing dramatically in your life. So expect the breakthrough power of God to come upon you as the oil comes on you this morning. Amen. Be desperate about it. It's not a doctrine of a church. It is one of the hidden powers of God for the saint. What is in the anointing oil? The yoke destroying power of God. Before I leave that, now if you look at Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1 to 3, we saw the Holy Ghost came. You look at verse 4 to 7, we saw the breakthrough power of that spirit. And they shall build their old ways. They shall raise up the former desolations. And they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. 
and strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. Come on, say breakthroughs. And the sons of the alien shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. I mean, foreigners will be working on your field. They'll be applying to you from their country. You'll be employing them and getting them residency. These are all the breakthrough manifestations of the Spirit of God. Now, quickly for time, what is in the anointing oil? Say with me, the yoke destroying power of God. Louder yet. Isaiah chapter 10 and verse 27, and it shall come to pass in that day that his body shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointed. Whatever represents the yoke of the wicked on anybody's life, any form of spell or enchantment that is challenging your salvation, challenging your redemption, making men to ask, where is your God? As this oil comes on your head today, every such yoke is declared destroyed. The yoke destroying power of God. The yoke destroying power of God. I got back to the office someday, years ago in the old church. I was home and I had a leading to get back and I met this young lady. What's the matter? My mother had been diagnosed with cancer in the U.S. I said, you have a picture? I said, yes. Now, in the name of Jesus, I anointed the picture. I said, cancer, get off this body. Went back to the hospital, can't find the cancer anymore. The yoke destroying power of God. Now, you are now here alive by yourself. Under this prophetic service, whatever represents a yoke of the wicked, tormenting any aspect of your life, your children, your family. In the name of Jesus, every such yoke, marital spare, business spare, career crisis, whatever represents the yoke of the wicked, making life difficult for you in one way or another, every such yoke is declared destroyed today. What is in the anointing oil? Say with me, the exemption power of God. The exemption power of God. Psalm 105 and verse 13. And as he went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sakes, saying, what? Touch not my anointed, and do my prophets no harm. You are exempted from what harms others. <laughs> exempted from what affects others. <laughs> Ezekiel chapter 9 and verse 6. The word says, Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women. But come not near any man upon whom is the mark. Amen. Amen. Remember Ephesians 1, 3, we are sealed with the Holy Ghost of promise. So the anointing sets a seal upon your life that will not let what affects others affect you. Because you carry a seal of heaven <laughs> via the mystery of the Holy Spirit, the anointing oil on your life. What slays others cannot slay you. Amen. What torments others cannot torment you. Amen. The exemption power of God is in the oil. The exemption power of God is in the oil. The exemption power of God is in the oil. Since 1999, no armed robber has entered here. Exemption, power of God. When we're doing the construction here, you are thousands of people walking here. It was inside the forest. No robber entered here. 
in the same vein, every evil that enters the home of others will not be able to enter your home. The exemption power of God is in the oil. Glory to God. What is in the oil? The healing power of God is in the oil. Mark 6, 7, he gave them power against unclean spirit. He gave them power against unclean spirit. Verse 12 and 13, and they went and preached that men should repent and anointed with oil which he gave them and he called it power. Many that were sick and healed them. The healing power of God is in the oil. So whatever sickness follows you here today is not permitted to return back with you. In the name of Jesus. Whatever disease follows you into church today is not permitted to return with you. Because the healing power of God is in the oil. The healing power of God is in the oil. The healing power of God is in the oil. The healing power of God is in the oil. Is any sick among you? Let him call upon the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord Jesus. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the spirit of the Lord in the oil shall raise him up. If he has committed sins, he shall be forgiven him. The healing power of God is in the oil. And you're walking free from every sickness and every disease from this time. Yeah. After this oil is blessed today, you will be taking a shot of it every night, the remaining days of this fasting. You'll be taking a shot of that oil every night, every night, hear me properly, every night. It will cleanse you, spirit, soul, and body. You will walk in liberty and dominate sickness and disease all the days of your life. Please administer this in faith. The healing power of God is in the oil. Well, but the fresher the oil, the greater its impact. Psalm 92 verse 10. My horn shall die exalt like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Fresh oil disarms dislodges, destroys the hold of the enemy on any life, on any area of our lives. Then my eyes shall see my desire upon my enemies, and my ears shall hear my desire upon the wicked that sits up against me. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, what happens? The Spirit of the Lord shall set up a standard against him. Isaiah 59 verse 19. Fresh oil empowers us to continue to flourish like a palm tree. By that anointing, those that be planted in the house of the Lord, they shall flourish in the course of our God. You don't suffer dry seasons anymore. <laughs> empowers us to scale strange heights. They shall grow like the cedar in Lebanon. Destroys the four horns that are out to molest our life and stop us from going forward. And pass us to be planted in the house of God. Those that be planted in the house of God, they shall flourish in the course of our God. And pass us to still bring forth fruit in old age. We read that in our welcome service. You don't lose relevance all the days of your life. And pass us to remain spiritually buoyant. They shall be fat and flourishing to show that the Lord is upright. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. <laughs> Amen. These are mysteries packaged into the anointing oil and you're walking into all of them one after the other today. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord one more time a big hand of praise, everybody. Amen. Amen. Now, very quickly, if you are here in this service and you are not born again yet, the people ask, men and brethren, what shall we do? He said, repent and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Empowerment is sequel to man's repentance. Conversion is the platform of empowerment. Until you are saved, you are not a candidate for empowerment. 
don't miss this hour. Wherever you are today, you want to surrender your life to Christ, you want to be born again, please turn to your feet. And I'll pray with you in a moment. God bless you as you do. You want your sins forgiven. You want to become a child of God. Please stand to your feet. This is your chance for a change of story. Please stand to your feet. God bless you. God bless you wherever you are. Stand to your feet. God bless you. You want to surrender your life to Christ. Today you want to be born again. You want to become a child of God. Please stand to your feet. Also, there are people here that need to rededicate their life to Christ. If you are standing, please remain standing. Remain standing, please. Would you please move to the nearest aisle to where you are so that our church officials can assist you in filling out your card very fast in the name of Jesus. There are also people here today that need to rededicate their lives to Christ. Lukewarmness can be most frustrating. How long shall you hold between two opinions? If God be God, then serve him. If it be bad, then go after him. You want to rededicate your life to Christ and begin to live a triumphant Christian life. You want to return from whatever place you may have gone back to Jesus, please stand to your feet and I'll pray with you at the same time. Wherever you are, you want to dedicate your life to Christ today, please stand. God bless you. Stand. God bless you. You want to dedicate your life to Christ today. Maybe you are once saved, but at the point, there was a disconnect. But you want to return back to God today, please stand to your feet. Glory to God. Everybody standing in this second call, also make your way to the nearest eye to where you are and there you will be prayed for in the name of Jesus. If you are not in church last Sunday and you don't have your own copy of this pack, we distributed four items, please signify and you shall put your pack in your hand while I pray with these precious people. Everyone that stood up, please move to the nearest eye. I'll be praying for you right there. Please signify and raise your hand. You are not in church last Sunday and you want to receive this pack Please, raise your hands, or shall we put that in your hand? We need this. It's our guide for the year. The clearing 2017, my case is different. You need to read this and digest it. Then the 21-day prayer and fasting uh, expectation prayer card. You need that. Then unveiling vision 2017, church growth vision. You need that. And the intercessory prayer guidelines. For 2017, you need that. And then, of course, winners personalize prophetic declarations. All of these four are put in one pack. Please take your pack and make use of it. Fill out those cards today. It's not late. Every three day slot in these 21 days will bring you specific deliveries. In the name of Jesus. All of us who are standing, please bow your heads for prayers. Please bow your heads for prayers and lift up your right hand to, to heaven as I pray with you. Father, say with me, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you today. Save my soul. Forgive me my sins. Lord Jesus, I accept you today as my Lord and my Savior. I believe you died for me. On the third day, you rose again that I might be justified. Right now, I believe my sins are forgiven. I'm justified by your blood. I'm saved. I'm restored. I'm now a child of God. I am free from the power of sin to serve the living God. Thank you, Jesus, for receiving me. Thank you, Jesus, for restoring me. And thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. Keep your hands up as I pray. Father, I pray over these precious souls. Your grace has brought them in. Let the same grace preserve them. I cover every one of you with the precious blood of Jesus. Remain covered all the days of your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Congratulations. 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 Amen. Shall we please rise to our feet? Bring up your bottle of anointing oil. Amen.
No noise, please. Open those bottles up. Leave the Lord the Most High. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare the content of these bottles the holy anointing oil. Yeah. Every declaration in that teaching turns into manifestation through this oil. Yeah. As you are anointed today, Dominion is conferred on you over all devils. Yeah. Over all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Yeah. By this anointing, be empowered for exploit. Yeah. By this anointing, be empowered for exploit. Yeah. The breakthrough power of God comes on your life today. Yeah. The yoke destroying power of God comes on your life today. Yeah. The exemption power of God is a seal upon your life today. Yeah. The healing power of God comes on your life today. Yeah. Your eyes shall begin to see your desires upon your enemies. Yeah. Your ears shall begin to hear your desire upon the wicked. In the name of Jesus, what hurts others will never be able to hurt you again. Every spell on anyone's life is declared broken today. Marital spell, career spell, business spell, family spell, whatever represents a spell is broken off everyone's life today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so shall it be. Amen. All that believe in the mysteries of the anointing oil, the mystery of the anointing oil, and all that it offers as expanded in that teaching and has prayed over you right now with this prophetic prayer, put a little of this oil on your fingertips and straight to your forehead, begin to appropriate the prophetic word on your life. Begin to appropriate. Whatever you receive of that word, begin to appropriate it. Whatever you receive of that word, begin to appropriate it. Whatever you receive of that word, begin to appropriate it. Whatever you receive of that word, begin to appropriate it. Whatever you receive of that word, begin to appropriate it. Your breakthrough is established today. Your healing and your deliverance is established today. You are free from every scourge of the wicked one. Brand new day. Brand new day. Brand new day. Zezoria le kraktanara balote plori. Yesha shaglarado sasi. Eplokoria takleria le tazu. Babala karotane. Ekrodiano prado. Yeshia Garatone, Abarabala Kraktanaro Tazuza. It's the dawning of a new day for you. It's the dawning of a new day for you. This fasting and prayer episode is opening new chapters to your life. Come and take it. Come and take it. The breakthrough power of God is on your life. Come and take it. Come and take it. The yoke destroying power of God is on your life today. The exemption power of God is on your life today. The healing power of God is on your life today. This fresh oil, these arms, these lodges, and this confit your enemy today. You are empowered to continue to flourish like a palm tree. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Father, honor the faith of the saints and let this mystery confirm mastery over everyone in this service today. 
your breakthrough testimonies is rushing in your direction. Every yoke under which you have lived in that toe, they are all declared destroyed. Your life shall remain exempted from all evils from henceforth. Your dominion over sickness and disease is confirmed today. In the name of Jesus, you shall continue to flourish from henceforth. There shall be no more dry seasons in your life. There shall be no more dry seasons in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. And blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name. The content of these bottles is declared the holy anointing oil. Don't forget, we are going to place ourselves on this covenant treatment for the remaining days of this fast. Every night, take a shot of this to bed. Glory to God. It will purge you clean. Every dying organ will pick up again. And the name of the Lord shall be glorified. Please continue to package yourself of distraction the remaining days of this fast. Stay focused. Get yourself into the happenings right now. You are empowered to serve. Keep serving God on the altar of prayer and fasting. Engaging our various intercession prayer guidelines. I mean, they are empowering. If you have tried it, I want you to try it. They just go through them. Very, this is only 60 points. And these 60 points, you are done in one hour. Praying with your heart. And then you find yourself being empowered because you are empowered to serve, not empowered for status. You are empowered for service. You are not empowered for status. And Anna was serving God with prayers and fastings daily. So serve God with prayers. Start right now. Somebody... Testimony was read today. He, the family told God, give us a soul each day of this fast. And they ended up with 20 souls. How many souls? 20 souls. Somebody's bringing someone to church next Sunday. You are that one. Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Because prayer and fasting destroys the hold of the devil on the unsaved. So pray somebody in. Utilize this fasting time to serve God. Follow somebody up that needs to be established in the faith. And you find yourself being empowered and re-empowered and re-empowered, changing levels from time to time. That will be your experience. Yeah. Lift up those two hands and give God thanks. Shall we together share the goodness of the Lord in fellowship, everybody? Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall do in praise of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. My case is different. Congratulations. Congratulations. Let's move out fast for the second service to commence.